So here I am in my snake den and I'm going to be talking about some of our um, native wildlife. Um, well, mostly native snakes because that's uh, the what I specialize in with the Virginia Herpetological Society. I do want to mention a couple of things before we get started. And uh, hey, come over here, guy. Um, the Virginia Herpetological Society is a 501c3 organization. And as you can see down here, um, our website is vaherpsociety.com. And a lot of what we do is uh, we focus on education, research, and conservation of our native uh, herpetofauna. And uh, so we, you know, basically have uh, about, I don't know, three, four hundred, uh, up to three, four hundred in our membership now. And all of our, um, you know, revenue we get goes directly into supporting research, education, and conservation of our reptiles and amphibians. We hold um, yearly uh, surveys in state parks and wildlife management areas. And it's, you know, some of them are open to the public, some are only open to members only. But I highly recommend uh, going to our website because we are probably, and I will say this even though I'm a little biased, but I think it's an objective truth, that we probably have the best herpetological website and, identif and, and animal identification website probably in the country right now. Uh, and I don't say that uh, lightly. I, I really do mean it. We put in a lot of hard work in our website. So um, we, get, we do identification. A lot of people send us uh, snakes uh, or pictures of snakes or other critters and we have a fantastic team that is very knowledgeable and is able to answer a lot of the questions every once in a while we do get stumped too especially if it's not the best picture but you know we usually end up finding the answer so uh, I encourage everyone to visit our website at vaherbsociety.com and uh, if you have any snake questions, we have a Facebook page. That's We have get a lot of traffic uh, through there as well. Um, and our uh, Facebook page is basically vaherpsociety.com or Virginia Herpetological Society uh, on Facebook. So, uh, yeah, highly encourage you guys to, to check it out and see what we're about. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to focus, uh, you know, in my snake den here, um, you can only see part of it. But I have lots and lots of um, both native but also exotic species. I, I do have uh, cobras in here. I have, as a matter of fact, there's an albino monocle cobra in here. Um, I have uh, things like rattlesnakes. I have uh, tree vipers. Uh, and I also have a lot of exotic non-venomous uh, species. And also a lot of different uh, weird morphs of uh, corn snakes and and king snakes and things like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, I am going to focus on our native species today, and I will show you one by one some of our um, beautiful, beautiful uh, spe native species that we have in Virginia. Part of the pros of, of doing a snake talk virtually or doing an exhibit virtually is that I can actually show you up close and personal um, uh, some of the venomous species of snakes that we have. Um, I have uh, here some uh, you know safety equipment and and I have uh, safety um, you know uh, or, or snake handling equipment that I can actually bring up close to the camera and show you guys some of our our more uh, you know our venomous species. I, I only have two of our three venomous species of snakes in Virginia, and the three venomous species are our copperheads, our cottonmouths, and the timber rattlesnakes or their Eastern, southeastern cousins, which are essentially the same species, but they're a protected version, is the canebrake uh, rattlesnake, uh, which is essentially a different but similar or the same. It's, it's a weird situation with the canebrakes and the timbers. Uh, genetically, they're very they're identical. Um, however, they look different, they behave different, um, and they're two distinct populations, and we treat them as such. So the only venomous uh, Virginia uh, native I do not currently have is the timber rattlesnake. Um, and I, but you know, um, I have some other cool snakes here that I can show you. So uh, without further ado, uh, what I wanna do first is everybody's probably wondering what I have here that's been sort of crawling around me. Um, this, believe it or not, is a rat snake. Um, and I will come up and, and bring them here a little closer, but um, rat snakes are 
essentially, uh, it, um, normally in the wild, they are black in color. However, this guy here is has a color uh, morph that was specifically bred, uh, you know, through um, uh, selective breeding in the, in the pet trade. This guy is has a mutation called leucism. And leucism, unlike albinism, um, is a little different in, in a couple of respects. One, uh, leucistic animals, um, the mutation occurs a little um, later in, in embryonic development, and which is why some cells still retain pigment, um, uh, mostly the melanin, as you can see. Um, in, in albinos, however, the the mutation occurs later and the only color in albinos that the, the only um, the mutation causes a, a change in the in the melanin uh, pigment this is why you still see in albinos um, they are uh, you know yellowish the eyes are pink things like that it's because they still retain some of the other pigments Whereas in leucistic animals, wherever you see the leucistic trait being expressed is completely white. Um, however, in some cells, they still do retain the, the melanin pigment. And, that's, um, and, and in some cases, you see leucism being expressed differently, for example, in calico cats, where they're white in some spots, but still retain some, some color or some pigments in others. Pigeons are another example of leucistic coloration or leucistic mutation. So this, this mutation can actually happen in um, other animals, and especially if we start selectively breeding for this mutation, you start getting things like this. So this is a, a leucistic rat snake, uh, not fully resistic, leucistic, I'm sorry, but, but it is it does exhibit that, that um, coloration. So as you can see here, uh, very, very, very cool uh, snake and and I don't know if you guys have noticed but it, with with the lighting that I have in here you start seeing a little bit of uh, uh, what looks like a little bit of rainbow uh, refraction of the light off the scales and and a lot of snakes do this some snakes uh, do this extremely well things like rainbow boas uh, or sunbeam snakes uh, really really reflect light uh, in a way where it, it shows a lot of uh, rainbow coloration but all snakes in the right sort of in the right angle. If the light hits them correctly or in the right angle, they also exhibit some of that rainbow coloration off the scales, which is kind of neat. But anyway, so this is a, this is a rat snake. This was bought in a, you know, at a reptile show and it was specifically bred to look like this. They, the, the color morph they call these, I think are licorice rat snakes. Um, probably, um, I would say maybe a Texas rat snake. I, I don't think this is an Eastern rat, but it's a beautiful example and is one of my favorite uh, show animals. Now I'm gonna show you what an actual rat snake, a native uh, Virginia rat snake looks like and um, ex the exact coloration. Now, here you go. Let me bring this guy a little closer. So this, is a Loudoun County rat snake. This was a baby that was uh, at one time, well, he's no longer a baby, but when I found him, he was a baby, and he uh, what, uh, ended up in a research facility where I used to work at in Loudoun County in the animal vivarium facility with a lot of mice and rats, and so he probably thought he had found an all-you-can-eat buffet at which point I was called in to um, rescue the snake and I've had him ever since and he's been a wonderful show animal for our educational events with the Virginia Herb Society. Now again as you can see unlike that the white one this guy is all mostly black. Now here's the interesting thing about rat snakes is that many in many cases most people always uh, or, or um, when I do educational events, a lot of people always ask me the question, well, how do, how do these guys get into, oops, I'm sorry there, buddy. How do they get into my attic? How do they get, you know, in these what seemingly impossible places? Well, rat snakes are extremely well adapted to climbing. They climb 
trees they can climb actually uh, vertically on uh, on the side of brick houses and what they end up doing is they'll climb right up the side of your house and if there's a a point of entry or you know maybe the screens a little broken or something like that they're actually able to get into your attic this way and um, so this is why sometimes people find them in their attics so extremely well adapted to climbing they like to eat things like uh, you know they'll eat anything from rodents to birds they'll even invade um, chicken coops and will go after the eggs and the chicks if they can find them but they will eat eggs um, and one thing about these rat snakes is this if you notice on the underbelly of them they're not completely black okay they do have white and some splotted you know coloration that's typical of these rat snakes and if you can if you notice also in this one you see a still a little bit of pattern okay when these guys are young when they're babies um, they actually are not black they're mostly gray and white with some black in them but as they get older they become black and uh, some sometimes do retain a little bit of this pattern this juvenile pattern as you can see with this one but in uh, in some adults they are, they do become jet black on the top now another thing about rat snakes is that we often hear people talking about black snakes and nine out of ten times what they're referring to is is an eastern rat snake or, or a, a black rat snake and the thing is there's no such thing as a black snake in Virginia uh, we have snakes that are black of different species we have rat snakes we have black racers we have eastern king snakes that are sometimes uh, you know pretty much black we can have melanistic versions of hognose snakes or timber rattlesnakes sometimes are completely black so when you hear the term black snake what we really there's we need more information um, you know about about what specific species but we do have um, nine times out of ten when people see a black snake it's these guys these guys are the largest and also the most common Virginia snake that we uh, see and these guys are found pretty much statewide they're everywhere they're very well adapted to suburban life and as well as in the woods and the farms and they do a very good job at making it keeping the critter population down meaning mice and rats which also helps with um, you know disease spread and things like that so they're very 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 extreme uh, extremely good at what they do and they uh, do help both people as well as um, keeping uh, you know rodent populations uh, down in, in Virginia so if you ever see a, a snake like this they are completely harmless um, you know just leave them alone and and they'll be on their business so again here is an eastern rat snake and you can see also right here the the color uh, refraction uh, the light hitting it and you can see a little bit of that rainbow coloration that's kind of neat uh, kind of like that so here you go that's a black rat snake or an eastern rat snake Pantherophis alleghaniensis is the scientific name and he is saying hi to everybody